Joining us now is power couple, Dr. <laughs> Summit Joss, a neurosurgeon, and Sonia Joss, one of Canada's top health and wellness experts. And they're here to tell us about a very exciting event coming up that they are co-chairs of. So welcome to what she said. Yeah, that sounds so official. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, co-chairs of the Trillium Diwali Gala. That's coming up on Friday, October 26th. Now, it is the GTA's first and largest Diwali event, and over the last 16 years, it's raised more than $9 million. So how did you first get involved with the event? Well, um, my husband actually got a job at Trillium, and so um, that's kind of our our lean into the event that Mm -hmm. started several years ago. I guess you've been working at Trillium now for three years? Three years, yeah. Right. Um, I've actually been attending the Diwali Gala for years. Um, My dad actually used to be like an avid participant. And so I've been going for, you know, quite a while. Um, But now we've gotten, I don't know, I guess a different taste of it being on the other side, on the committee side of things. And so... How's that going for you? I don't know. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of work. It's a lot of work. A lot of really fun work. I mean, the Trillium Diwali Gala is essentially a really elaborate... um, South Asian event that has all of, you know, the fun and flair of an Indian wedding. So you've got, you know, incredible food. They go on for days. Right? (laughs) Those go on for days. Well, I have chaired a gala committee. Mm -hmm. And so what were you drinking when you said yes? (laughs) Well, it's it's funny because the gala has been going on for 16 years and Mm -hmm. it's kind of getting bigger and bigger. And so, as Sonia said, we were attending the gala. And um, it's always been going to benefit different programs, so cardiac surgery, oncology. And so we really wanted to make the case for neurosurgery. So last year was the first time neuro ever uh, was funded. So, you know, you're, you're new, you're starting out, you want new toys. And so you say, yes, I'll do it. And <laughs> the first year was uh, probably a lot easier because no one took us seriously. And so there's been a lot more responsibility this year uh, yeah. as the second year that it's going to the stroke yeah, program as, this as year. the committee sort of evaporates and it's just the two of you yes. and a few other people. Is that how it always goes? So what's it like working together as co-chairs? Um, you know, I think it adds I, I will say there's no co. <laughs> uh, she chairs it and then uh, gives me the heads up and then uh, she takes the calls uh, and I'm around. But uh, yeah, so I I do I, I do a lot of the medical side of things, which is very few and far between, but she's really the one. Well, Look, but this is this is for you. Then the proceeds from this year's gala, as you mentioned, will support the hospital's regional stroke and neuro, neurosurgical program. Mm-hmm. So tell us what what impact it will have. So a gala uh, like this, yeah. So so you know most uh, capital investments in a hospital are from the community. Right, mm-hmm. and so you know the government sp- uh, pays for the day-to-day stuff, but to get the technology that we need to be on the forefront comes from the community. And so, um, one of the big developments in stroke uh, care has been this new technique where we can actually go up into the brain, grab the clot, and pull it out. And it's made a dramatic difference in terms of outcomes for patients. And it's happened in the last few years. And so we're catching up with the technology. So we have this special x-ray machine called a biplane, which we use to see the blood vessels of the brain and the clot. And uh, we're looking to use this money to invest in a new machine. Where you said you go up and into the brain. Where do you where do you enter yeah, through so the arm? I mean, where your leg? Yeah, yeah, where? <laughs> yeah. So you've seen like angiograms, yes. right? So basically the same technique where we go in through an artery in the groin called the femoral artery, and we go up with a catheter, and all but the this, way to the brain. Yeah, and we go up into the brain, and the X-ray and the dyes show us where our catheters are. So we're about a meter away from the brain, and we're kind of twisting these little catheters to try and do things. And so we can do a lot of things. We can treat aneurysms. We can treat AVMs and stroke. So what? What? How has that changed the outcome? So it's been patients. dramatic. I mean, you know, up until um, the last twenty years, there's a medication called TPA, which is a clot busting medication. Mm-hmm. So if you have a stroke, you can come in within four and a half hours of your stroke and have this medication to dissolve the clot. Now, only about ten percent of people actually present within four and a half hours to get this medication. A lot of people don't get it, and so they're left to, you know. Just try to survive the the stroke, and some of them pass away. And so, uh, you know, the literature says that about twenty nine percent of patients who get that medication go on to have a good outcome, meaning they can return to work. That's- With this new thing technique, we can do it up to twenty four hours after the stroke. So you can come in a day after you've had your stroke. We can pull out the clot, restore blood flow, and fifty percent of people now will go back to work or wow. a good um, function compared to twenty nine. Yeah. And I'm going to put you on the spot here and ask you how much it costs, because I don't think people at home realize what 
how expensive medical equipment is. So somebody told me for a baby, a little thing to put their a tongue suppressor mm-hmm. is like $150. Yeah. No, like, I mean, up, yeah. for a bassinet, it's a fortune. So a machine like this, how much is so it? So the machine itself is about $2 million. Um, yeah. Just uh, fitting the room to accommodate this is about a $1 million. Um, and then just the, the stents that we use to remove the clot, for example, is about $4,000 each time we do this procedure. And that's just this, the, the, the catheters and stuff we that's use. That's nuts, but, eh? but it's just, you know, I hope people will go and support this. Absolutely. Because there can't be that many of them. No. And, and, you in know, the GTA. Exactly. So there's 130 roughly hospitals in Ontario, 10 of which have neurosurgery, and only seven have this neurointerventional biplane um, technique. So only seven hospitals that do it. And I think it's so interesting it, also, actually, just to touch upon that point that, you know, people think that Trillium is specifically a Mississauga hospital, mm-hmm. but they don't recognize the vast geography that Trillium is actually, um, you know, taking care of because, yes, it's on the West End, so it doesn't feel like it's quite so central. But I we mean, take care can, of like Oakville, uh, Mississauga, Etobicoke, Brampton, Brampton, Milton. But it's not only that. It's like universities. Hospitals have specialties. Yes. yes. And, for example, for children, I mean, you go to a level three yes. for a child who's really ill, right? Yeah. Yeah. And there aren't that many. Exactly. So if you have a stroke, it's quite possible somebody from Scarborough, if they don't have room for them somewhere else, will will come out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it works. Yeah. So do you think at the end of this year, with with fingers crossed, you'll be able to buy it? Yeah. So we We're are hoping. in the RFP process right now. So we'll hopefully have something by the end of the year. And we're looking to install the machine hopefully by April. Um, but you know, as you know, it's one thing to get the machine and they'll give it to you on credit, but we have to find ways to pay for it. So that's what we're working yeah, on. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, about the gala Friday, October 26th at the Pearson convention center. Mm-hmm. That's in Brampton. Mm-hmm. You get more than a thousand guests attend. Absolutely. Year, more than a right? thousand guests. The food is just tremendous. I mean, we're lucky that Indian clothes are primarily made out of stretchy pants <laughs> and elastic waists because, um, it is like a really incredibly food focused event. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's some really great South Asian entertainment this year. We've got RDB. Yeah, yeah. So they're um, they're a really really great group that uh, do a lot of um, you know current fusion South Asian type music. So so we're really excited about them. And are you volunteering the next morning to do a little workout to wear off oh, all that food? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But I will say that the dancing that goes down after dinner for the few hours that you're on the dance floor is pretty sufficient to work up a pretty, yeah, pretty mean off. sweat. But let me just say this for any. Anybody who's listening who lives in the area or or who supports the idea and they're not going to be one of those thousand guests, yes. where can they go to donate anyway? To buy tickets or to donate? Yeah, so DiwaliGala.ca yeah. is the website and the Trillium Health Partners Foundation is always open to donations and, and things like that. And there, you know, any a small amount can make a huge difference. And but can so, they specify that they want it to go that absolutely, to that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, That's and it's important. amazing, like the work that the foundation does. I mean, you really, as you said, right, you just take healthcare for granted and you assume mm-hmm. that everyone's got the technology and you don't really sit back to think about where does all this come from until you're on the other side, on the committee side, seeing what the foundation really does. And then you're like, oh my goodness, like there's a whole engine behind how to make healthcare top notch. I don't think people really understand that all the equipment is bought by the community. Yeah. Right. Like the mm-hmm. hospital, yeah. it's the funding and the salaries, that's fine. But yeah. if you don't have an x ray machine, yeah. what do you? You gonna do? Yeah, but if I you want know. a new hospital, I mean, uh, that you ha- that the community has to pay for that. Absolutely, yeah. as opposed to just assuming that the technology comes with the building, yeah. which is like really what I used to think. You know, you're like, well, if you've got a hospital, then there's going to be stuff inside there. But where is the stuff coming from? <laughs> now, for those who don't know, Sonia, ex- explain what Diwali is. Uh, so it is the Festival of Lights. Mm-hmm. Um, it is, uh, you know, India's largest um, festival. It goes on for, I mean, the celebrations typically go on for a month. Um, and so there's firecrackers and sweets and, and a She's lot. She's back on the food again. Ra- <laughs> well, can you tell that I haven't had lunch yet? <laughs> yeah. um, but it's all around prosperity. And um, it really is considered to be the most tremendous festival um, for the South Asian community. And I think Canada is doing a really great job of really kind of like livening it up. You know, mm-hmm. I hear that there's a lot of fireworks that go on in Brampton these days and stuff mm-hmm. during the Diwali yeah. time. So for the whole community, it tends to be a pretty big mm-hmm. affair. And it's it's nice that we've been able to kind of wrap the two things together. Such an auspicious occasion and such a tremendous cause kind of bringing the two together. Okay, so you can get tickets uh, to the event mm-hmm. at 
diwaligala.ca. So that's D I W A L I Gala dot C A. You said that really well. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, really well. Uh, <laughs> my kids went to a Montessori school. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know. Thank you for coming in and telling us all about it. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. Well, she said-